We I'm did the it. worst stick flipper of all time. Don't so worry, I appreciate I'll your patience it. in showing me. I saw you, you hit Tom, yes. and I saw you kind of give it a little bit of a. Yes, you push it a little bit. Oh, well, that's terrible. Let's see. Let's go <laughs> fresh. There we go. You push it a little bit for me, Lee. Wow. Well, there we see? go. And thumb a little. See, it's the magic behind the magic. Exactly. Welcome, everybody. Nick DiVirgilio here, hanging out with Grayson the Crewman. And this is a blast for me. Grayson is a fantastic drummer, and to be able to sit next to you, man, and just jam along is a real treat. It's my honor. My honor. Um, so let's go back in history a little bit. You started playing drums at what age? Four. And did you like this style of music at that early age, or did it grow on you? It had to grow on me. Um, big influences. My first big influence, I'll say, was Carter Beaufort. Okay. So not too far off because he was yeah. a Buddy Rich fan when he sure. started. Um, but no, I was not. I was not playing jazz at all. <laughs> I was playing rock, funk, John Bonham, Carter Beaufort. Yeah, because you got. I've heard no. you play rock. You, know, you can play yeah. anything you want. No problem at all. So my question is, I want to get to some technique here because yeah. your technique is absolutely awesome. And um, so at those early ages, were you playing traditional grip from your early on? Did you, no. did you start match grip? I was using uh, match grip for from the age of four to the age of about 15, 16. And you never played traditional? Never, never. I had no interest, to be honest with you, no interest. Okay. I said, it looks cool in photos, but you know, I have to relearn drums. Like, this one. So did you make it like that switch where you, you went to traditional, <laughs> tilted the snare and did all that kind of stuff at one time, or did that kind of evolve as well? Well, I started tilting the snare a little bit because I realized actually it's just rim shots in it's general. It's just easier, right? Exactly. A yeah. tiny bit of tilt, easy. Right. So that was kind of like the first inkling. And then got with my teacher, Ed Balsamo. Okay. And he said, hey, you want to learn traditional? And I said, all right, it's my first day with you. Why not? It's a fresh start. Let's try it. And it was tough. It was like relearning the drums. Right. It was as if I took my drum set, put it backwards because I couldn't play a fill. I couldn't play a roll. I couldn't play a beat. It was literally everything, except my right hand was fine. <laughs> that was it. So can you show us, the audience watching, give us some, <laughs> some tips and tricks on your left hand. Because yes. the speed that you play, I could see that you use your thumb, yep. you use your first and your middle finger yep. a lot, yep. when, especially when you get up to speed. So can you give us a couple yeah. of tips and tricks on that? Easy. I'm thinking of my traditional grip kind of like gears on a car, gears on a bike. Okay. First gear, I mean, I can use my wrist for a first gear. As you would, you know, you're not playing too fast. You're right. just hammering it out, a lot of power. Now you'll realize as you get higher in the gears, if you will, a little bit less power, but I'll talk about how to kind of bring that power back. Second gear is kind of, it's my own thing kind of. So I call it the joystick, which is the thumb acting kind of like a joystick, pushing down, so. So first and second gear will get me very far. That's just first and second. Question before you yes. move on. Now just watching from this angle over here, your thumb's doing its, its joystick thing, and it looks like you're pulling off your yes. first and your middle and your first finger. Yes. And it's just your thumb working. Yes. So this is not, you know, like a school of perfectness. Yeah, it's just good. Yeah, it's cool. It's what works for me. So everyone's gonna have something different. For me, I found it actually can get in the way. And that's when sometimes you'll see you can flub fills by, you know, the stick is moving and you get caught and the stick will kind of drop. That it's kind of like the tr traditional drop, I like to call it, okay. where it'll just it'll drop out. So what I found was, especially if I'm on the snare drum, if I'm on the tom, as you know, toms don't have the same surface as a snare drum or a hi-hat, right. I'm using my wrist. Okay. It's going back to first and second gear. So rolls on the toms, my newt switches back to that. Um, the thumb and the first finger alternating. Straight out of Tommy Igo. I yep. learned it from his DVD. Still use it to this day. <laughs> um, at the really fast tempos, I honestly I don't think about what I'm doing because right. Well, that's you, yeah. You've reached a level exactly. now. You don't have to think exactly. about it. That's great. Um, so 
what I like to do is I think of it almost like, like I said in the previous video, it's almost like a guitar. You're picking a guitar. So it's not pushing the, th these fingers act almost like guides in a way. Right. So they're, again, making sure you have a level of control where the stick is not going to fly out if I do this. You'll see that when I, when I start to angle differently, that's when the different fingers come in. Right. My middle is kind of like the biggest guide. So if I'm moving, usually it's my middle finger. Okay. My ring finger will kind of hang in there. Then my pinky, it's like top gear, hang on. If I'm playing really fast, that's when it starts to come in. Okay. Um, but for the most part, 90% of the stuff you'll see me do, thumb, pointer, middle, and wrist. The other two act as like last resort, you really need it kind of thing. And last question on this yeah. technique is how important is it to hold the stick in the perfect spot, the fulcrum area? I mean, how, yes. how is that a big deal? Yes. So, uh, my opinion, I can't get that joystick thing happening if it's not in the right spot. Okay. So, it, the, the traditional drop thing I was talking about, right. it'll happen. See, it dropped in. Yeah. So, if I do it too far back. You get no bounce back. Exactly, there, right? yeah. nothing. So it's really about finding that sweet spot on the drum and in your hand. Awesome. All right, so after you go home, I'm going to sit down with the pad and I'm going to try and learn some of that stuff. And then I'll send you a video and you tell me how I'm doing, all right? Okay. Now, why we're here, yes. I would like to learn. I mean, I've had some ex experience in big band drumming. I mean, I spent most of my life in the rock world, granted. But mm -hmm. back in the early days, I did play a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. But I would like to know someone who lives it and breathes it and is really passionate about it. Teach me like a quintessential big band fill. Like oh. we're playing a little bit of a groove, whatever the tempo is. What's like just like a, an awesome big band fill? All right, well, one or two of those. And see if I can pull it off. I'll say this. This first one it instantly came to mind is not stereotypical big band, okay. but it fits so perfectly. Saw it recently, said that's my new like go-to. Okay. Based off six stroke roll. Okay. So, so I'll play a little bit, explain it. Okay. So, seems crazy, it's not. Six stroke roll. Right, left, right, right, left, left, you know that. Okay. Where the magic comes in is with the accent. So I like to, I change it up a lot. That left, right after the right, so the second note of the grouping. Right. I accent that. You'll see I, I use this kind of whipping with my wrist. Let me see if I can do it. I'm gonna do it match grips. So let's see if I can do it. I'll do a match grip. Okay. Now it has a little bit of a bludged uh, sort exactly. of thing to it. Because it sounds like now the way I saw it used. The variation is you take those two rights, so two rights, and you do right, right. Yes, yeah, so you're orchestrating it around the kit in different ways and just oh giving yeah. it a whole new flavor. Oh, yeah. You could do that with paradiddle diddles. Sweet. 
All right, something else? Can you give me, you got one more in mind you can show the me? Classic Frank Sinatra build. Please, let me, let me learn it. It's sunny Payne. Teach it to me. All right, well, it's easy. <laughs> it's a single stroke roll. Okay. Underrated rudiment. People think, oh, it's just. So Sonny would use it in two ways. So let's say the hits are on one and the end of two. Sonny would add in these little bursts of single stroke rolls between them or doubles. Let's, let's ride from it and bring it into that. Okay. And what he would do is he would play a different dynamic. So you could hear it. Or. And you would purposely drag the end of it. So the band would hit. Sometimes you would fall into it. That's another one you just learned. Those little anticipations, say the solos is happening, done. Something like that. That's killer. It makes, it makes that style of drumming really exciting. And sometimes it feels as a listener, you tell me if I'm wrong, like the time floats. But it really is not floating. I mean, it's, it's really solid in there. It's just, it, it has this, this floaty sort of free sound to it, which mm -hmm. is killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Rocking and rolling? Yeah, did you want to try that? Did you, learn oh. it? Did you really learn it? <laughs> you Play calling it me out? Play it matched. You want to learn the Buddy Rich crossovers? Do I want to learn the Buddy Rich crossovers? Well, yeah. All right, well, <laughs> there's a couple ways he would do Before it. Before you get to that. Yes. So many great drummers from, the, from back in the day. Do you have a favorite? Sonny Payne. Okay. By Why? Far. All right, well, there's many reasons. And then, we'll, then teach me the Buddy Rich crossover, Easy. please. The energy. This man. I, I, I haven't found a drummer who played with the passion, the excitement, the, the joy. Okay. Also, there was a, the element of kind of being a jokester. Okay. You hear the band with him in the seat. Um, different band. Right. And the second main reason was he wasn't afraid to take risks. Okay. This little single stroke roll thing I showed you, a lot of drummers would say, oh, that's overplaying. Oh, that's, uh, 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 or, or they'd be too nervous to put to it in between. It, yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. you know the feeling of, Messing up a big fill kind of feeling. Try every one of their fills. He just exudes it, and it was his energy. It kind of feels like, wow, I need to have like four espressos just to like try one of his fills, because it's like, how does he do it? So was there a time when you were growing up and first getting into this where you heard him for the first time, and it went just like the light bulb went on, and it, was, it kind of blew your mind? I, it wasn't too long ago. It was less than a year ago, to be honest with you. Um, I had heard his name, people have told me, and I thought, okay, he's just another, you know, one of those amazing drummers, but you hear so many names. Right. I remember I watched a video of him playing Apples with the Harry James Band, and he was using brushes. I was always told, oh, brushes are like a quiet thing, and you play them on the snare drum, and you play some time. He was doing crossovers, he was flipping them, he was playing under the cymbal, I said, that's what I want to do. I watched more videos. This man's soaked in sweat, doesn't stop. He just, it's like, he's like a car battery. He just does not stop. And I was like, okay, now I'm going to practice so I have the endurance to play like this. Sure. And that's when the light bulb went off of, I have a million new fill ideas. I have energy ideas. I have this, I have that. And that just put my playing to the next level. Very cool. All right, show me this Buddy Rich crossover. Okay, well, there's two variations. The five-stroke roll version, I'd say the most simple. So five-stroke roll. Very simple. So, 
Take your right hand. Play your right hand double. Okay. Rack tom. And what you're going to do is you're going to put your left hand on the floor tom, play the, the left double. Right hand single. Yes. Yes. So he would combine it that way. That was a combination of singles, doubles, right. whatever you want. Now, the coolest way you would do it is he would play singles. Back to that six stroke roll kind of thing. So they're all interconnected. Sure. Paradiddle diddles, single stroke rolls, five stroke rolls, and you'll see a pattern. All basic rudiments. Yeah, they're all based around singles exactly. and doubles of some form or another. That's one of the things I talk about when explaining these things is there's only so many notes you can play on each limb. Sure. One to three. You're, maybe you're a god level, okay, four. Four on one hand. Okay. If you think of it that way and you're watching these videos or listening to these recordings, you think, all right, well, it's a combination of singles and double singles. Nine times out of ten, it's going to be way simpler than you think. Right. So you'll watch a Buddy Rich video and he'll go, <laughs> Singles and doubles. Right. Way simpler. So I think if you nail singles, doubles, some basic rooms, paradiddles, single stroke rolls, double stroke rolls, five stroke rolls, six stroke rolls, paradiddle diddles, you're done. Now, did you ever get into books like Stick Control and things like yes. that back in the day? Yeah, I religiously learned all of them okay. uh, from my first teacher, then a little bit into my second teacher. And I'll say this the biggest benefit I found was clearly technique and independence when it came to stick control, master studies, syncopation. Sure. What I, sh you know, shied away from was kind of learning um, vocabulary from a book. And I found something that a lot of people can relate to this, I think, because a lot of people have told me their experiences. It gets to a point where you're learning these vocab, maybe four-bar phrases, six-bar phrases, whatever, and you're spending so long trying to figure out the independence that's required for that phrase, right. that you're thinking, okay, am I ever going to use this on a gig? They, I remember one time I was on a gig and I thought, okay, for this fill I'm actually going to use you know, phrase four because it sounded cool from page 39. That'll never happen again because I realized that, that it's not music. It's right. like you're playing an exercise. I'd rather watch a Sonny Payne video and say, okay, I'm going to learn that fill and then sit down and learn it and no. Not write it out note for note, no. Sit there for half the time. You know, okay, he's doing a crossover into a double. Okay, crossover into a double. Chick, new, new idea, done. Vocab, click, done. Way Very simpler. Cool. Now, before we play out this video, because I definitely want to play some more with you, man. Um, how, I'm going to show my age here. Well, I'm very young, just in case you were 20, wondering. You know, 20. Just in, very in case yeah. you were wondering. Two years but old how old. cool is it that now we have the ability to go sit on, in front of our computer and find all of this amazing content of drummers from way back in the day, from Gene Krupa on up, and watch them play? Because it wasn't that easy when I was growing up as a kid to, to see these things. Mm -hmm. And you had to research and just hear, listen to on record and that kind of stuff, which was great. I mean, obviously, I got by. But how amazing is it that you can go there and study these things because I see a lot of your videos on Instagram you're playing along to old songs mm -hmm. you learn like the solos note for yep. note and that kind of stuff talk about that a little bit if you don't mind it's a privilege there I don't know how you did it <laughs> I'm kidding but it, it, it's really something you know I had a taste of it because I'm not too young to the point where I don't remember reading books you know mm -hmm. in elementary school it was still technology was still getting there I'm not that old but it was still a point of books. Like obviously there were no records. I just had an experience where I wanted to find a live album and I had to get a CD. That was an experience. <laughs> um, man, I think the, the whole thing of slowing things down. Yeah, the fact that you can do that is amazing, yeah. This apps where you can take up the drums. I know, it's, 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 like it's nutty. It's, it almost gets to the point where it can 
almost go the other way if people are overanalyzing. Sure. Too. Well, you could do that with anything. Exactly. Right? Yeah. But I mean, I would. What would I have given when I was a kid to oh. slow down Tony Williams' parts to try Easy. and learn? That? I mean, that would have been amazing. <laughs> Crazy. It's uh, it's something. So Grayson, thank you so much for this opportunity, man. This is a lot of fun for me, and it's just great seeing a kid your age with the passion you have because uh, you know a lot of people, a lot of kids your age just aren't into this kind of music. So I yeah. hope you're really showing the younger generation. Uh, how cool this music Thank really you. is because it is a lot, a lot of fun. It doesn't mean you can't rock and still do other things, obviously, because you can play it all. Yep. So with that in mind, man, thanks so much for coming to Sweetwater and hanging out with me, and let's play some more drums. Let's do it. All right, man.